This is the story of a ragtag bunch of church members who set out to perform a Christmas play, and the director who tried his hardest to just keep it all together. The Glory of Christmas. My name's Joseph, and in the Christmas nativity play, The Glory of Christmas, I play Joseph. That's right. I was born to play this role. Joseph has no clue what to do when it comes to babies. So in order for him to play the role of Joseph, we got him an infant simulator doll from the local home act teacher. So, you know, he could practice a bit. It's an insane shriek it's baby. It's a burp. It's a burp? Oh, so put your fingers under and try to find the, where's the spine on this thing? I don't know. And check the front. Joseph is terrified. I don't blame him. I mean, babies don't even have kneecaps. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Burping like a boss? Uh, yeah, way to go, fake dad. I heard things may not be going so well with the infant simulator doll. Hey, Joseph, your mom's here to pick you up. Yeah, coming. As you can see, my mom's house is full of antiques. So I did what any good home economics teacher would do. I sent Joseph home with a, a baby egg. I think about Joseph, like Bible Joseph, a lot. What it would have been like for him to have an angel come and tell him that his wife is pregnant with God's child. Ha! Like he would have had to really dig deep and find his, his compassion and his understanding because he really, really loved her. My dear Mary, it is going to be a long journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem for the census, especially with your belly being so humongous. With, 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 with child, Joseph, the line is being with child. <sighs> right. Sorry, ma'am. Is the age difference what's bothering you? I want you to know, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> okay, please people, let's just take it from the top. I understand that Joseph is radically underqualified for all he's about to encounter. But isn't that the type of people God uses? The most unlikely folks to do the biggest things? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seems like those are the ones he always picks. Because he's a God that'll never give up on us. Ha! Ha ha! Yes! Ha ha! We need to get I have swaddled! Ha! Hello everyone. I'm so glad you are joining us today for our second message in our series, The Glory of Christmas. There are some verses in 1 Corinthians that I love. They are found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 27 to 31, and this is what they say. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. All throughout history, God proves again and again those words. Again and again, he proves that he chooses the foolish things to shame the strong. Again and again throughout history, God uses the least expected people to bring about his plans and his purposes. A quick read through some of the most popular Bible stories reveals that God never uses the people you would expect him to use. Those who are rich and noble or well-equipped for the job. Think about it. Abraham was an old man. Moses stuttered. Rahab was a prostitute. David was an adulterer and murderer. 
Matthew was a tax collector. Saul was a former persecutor of Christians. And don't forget the little boy with the five loaves and the two fish. And that's just the short list. Time and time again, God uses everyday, run-of-the-mill people to accomplish His will and ultimately do great things that reveal His glory. Why does He do that? because he never gets tired of receiving glory in situations that can only be attributed to his own work through imperfect, lacking, weak, underwhelming, and dependent people. That 1 Corinthians passage puts it this way, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. God enjoys involving the most unexpected, the most unqualified people in his story because it shows what only he can do as they follow his lead. Joseph is certainly an example of what God can do when the ordinary allow God to use them in unordinary ways. Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 to 24 tells us Joseph's story. Look at verses 18 and 19 with me. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. There's nothing extraordinary about Joseph. I think sometimes we forget that. Joseph was human. The New King James Version calls him a just man, but Joseph was also just a man. After Mary tells him about the angel's visit to her and how she was pregnant, Joseph is still filled with doubts. How is this even possible? Mary must have fell and hit her head or something. Who on earth would ever ever believe this story. This is not the kind of marriage I had dreamed of. What will everybody think of me, of us? Why would God decide to identify someone like Joseph, someone so ordinary, someone filled with so many doubts and questions to play the role of Jesus' earthly father? Because God has a way of choosing the least likely people to do great things so that his glory may be displayed in them. Joseph was about to learn this. He thinks over his decision to call off the engagement to Mary when God intervenes and convinces Joseph that he could do this, that he could be a part of this amazing plan that he could be used by God in such a way that would bring great glory to God. Matthew 1, 20 to 25 tells us, But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to his son, and he gave him the name Jesus. God would do it again, just like he had time after time throughout history. God would take the foolish and weak things to shame the wise. God would take a willing nobody, Joseph, and use him to bring about the glory of the greatest story ever told. The Joseph that we watched on the video was probably not at all like Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, except for one thing. 
Near the end of the video, the director says this, I understand that Joseph is radically underqualified for all he's about to encounter. But isn't that the type of people God uses? The most unlikely folks to do the biggest things. It seems like those are the ones he always picks because he is a God who will never give up on us. He is a God who will never give up on us. There is so much truth in those couple lines. There's so much hope for those of us that come to this Christmas season feeling much like Joseph. How many of us feel radically underqualified to do all that is on our plate in a way that gives glory to God this Christmas? For the one who feels afraid about the future, for the one who feels inadequate to take care of your family like you think you should, for the one who feels like you're in a dead-end job, for the one who feels stretched between taking care of kids and aging parents, for the one who feels misunderstood, for the one who feels unjustly treated, for the one who feels in over your head with responsibilities that were not part of your plan. You are exactly the kind of person God desires to use to bring him great glory this Christmas. Although you may feel like the most unlikely person to do something great for God, realize today that that is exactly when God can use you most. Do not give up on God this Christmas because he will never give up on you. He wants you to know that he is with you and for you this Christmas. He wants you to know that like Joseph, he desires you to trust him and not be afraid in your circumstances. Day by day, you can find courage and strength as you follow God's leading in your life to do what he wants you to do and say what he wants you to say. Each of us have our own story. Each of us are unique in personality, in history, in circumstances. Only you can do what God wants to do through you. There is no one else that can bring glory to God in the unique way that you can. If you feel like you are the only one who is radically underqualified to do such a thing, remember, Part of the glory of Christmas is that Christmas is about God using the most radically underqualified people to bring him glory. He regularly uses those who find themselves in less than ideal circumstances to bring him the greatest glory. You have been uniquely positioned to step into the moment of this Christmas season to not be afraid to trust in God, and to make yourself fully available to him no matter what happens. Remember what the angel of the Lord said to Joseph in his dream. Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. As you think about your life and the responsibilities before you today, what is it you are afraid of? What is God asking you to step towards with faith in him as you trust in him and choose not to be afraid? If you feel radically underqualified, know that you are in good company because God specializes in using the radically underqualified. He finds great joy and gets great glory when his people choose to trust him and see how he will come through if they will only leave the outcome to him. Will you choose to make yourself available to God this Christmas? To get glory out of your life and situation knowing he has done it time and time again throughout history? Will you be like Joseph and choose to trust and not be afraid to step forward with God regardless of how inadequate you may feel. God wants to use your life and circumstances 
to bring him glory this Christmas. In Joseph's case, the scripture says, when Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. How will you respond in your situation and life this Christmas?